Why did I leave the keto diet after three years? Wait for this. I'm going to go over the good, excellent, not so good, and what I would have done different. Okay? I have quite a few clients that have been on the keto diet and still are. And this is what I would have done. Wait for this. Hit that like button, please. Subscribe today. And if you are new to the channel, thank you. If you're still here with me, thank you still even more. I appreciate the, the support. But what we do here, what I like doing is breaking down the science, the documentation, the literature, and the overall average YouTube influencer. All the information, breaking it down into real life scenarios for the people like us that live in the real world, that are not living in Hollywood and living in just this whole scenario where we need to lose, you know, lose body fat and gain muscle, retain muscle for longevity's sake and connecting nutrition and fitness in a way that makes sense day to day. And I did not mean to rhyme there, but it sounded good. But here is why I stopped. Okay, I got some things on the board here. Pay attention. I'm going to talk as loud as I can. And I promise you guys, the mic is coming. The mics are coming. I'm going to be so much, I'm going to sound so much better. I'll probably sound completely different. Maybe like Idris Alba or somebody. Probably not, but let's hope. Maybe I can change the voice on it, but <laughs> why I stopped the keto diet. These are the main issues that I started having after three years, 38 months-ish right there, where I really documented it and I was really on board solely. High fats, protein, no carbs. Stayed very dedicated to it, all right? And what I found is I wasn't consuming enough protein. Of course, you hear me talk about in a lot of videos one gram per pound of body weight, of body weight that you actually want to weigh. So if you weigh 200 pounds and you want to lose 20 pounds of body fat, eat 180 grams of protein at least, right? That was what I wish I followed more. And I didn't. I really didn't. I stayed very high in fats. And what you find, you know, you know, you, you find that fats are not as nutrient dense when it comes to just minerals and things that, that, that are just missing out of like, Meat, for instance, out of just different carbohydrates that are more healthy versions of carbs versus the unhealthy versions and the abuse of the, of the carbohydrates. And that's the reason why the keto diet, it keeps you from all that nonsense, plugs in normally, but it's very high in fat. I wish I ate more protein. I wish I followed that protocol, and I did it. I really did it. But I lost a lot of body fat. On the diet, I was eating a ridiculous amount of fat, staying with my carbs. I mean, not my carbs, with my calories, but to the point where I'm like, okay, you know, and I started seeing these, noticing these, not just noticing the differences, really never paid attention until I was really honed in on it, right? So, and one of the biggest things, I wish I took more potassium and more magnesium. But potassium mostly because when you're eating on a keto diet, I was eating a lot of salt and you start to deplete yourself of potassium. And we need three to four, three to four times more potassium that we, we're deficient in. So much so that I've got cramps all the time. And that's part of a magnesium thing too. But I was getting, I was getting cramps. I was in, in my calves playing basketball, things like that. And, and it got worse, right? It was getting worse. Well, I wasn't getting a lot of those minerals from fats i wasn't eating any carbohydrates to get those minerals so i wish i replaced that at least the potassium because i was on magnesium i was getting the high amounts of salt um, on that and it changed my hormones in a way it, you know i'm not going to get into it too much personally but i noticed the difference in the gym and at home if that makes sense to you in a way that i was forcing it to push forward and it really wasn't there and losing a lot of energy and you notice it, the strength-wise in the gym. So that's because my protein levels, of course, were way down in comparison to where they were at when I, when I went off, weaned myself off the diet. Now, I didn't just go all off the diet. And I'm going to go over that here in a minute. And I wish I took a multivitamin because I know there was nutrition gaps in there. Because I was eating, you know, chicken, lots of chicken, lots of, lots of green vegetables like broccoli a lot, Brussels sprouts. I was eating a lot of arugula. 
I was eating those things, right? But there was such a gap in with B vitamins. And I'm not going to say go out there and eat a bunch of liver and become the liver king, but I'm like, I wish I took more uh, like, a, like a supplement of some kind um, when it came to that. And I didn't, okay? And that's one of the issues when you start or deficient, not deficient B vitamins, but very low levels of vitamins that you actually need, especially fat, fat soluble vitamins becomes very, very detrimental, okay? And I was eating way too much keto, keto, too many keto treats. Keto boxes is something, anything that said keto on it, not, I'm just being silly, but seriously, I was making keto, I, had, I have a whole book that I can write on keto recipes that I just gathered from everywhere and did versions of mine, one cup versions. I had a one cup version keto recipe of one cup like cakes, um, like uh, not pies, but cookies, muffins, things of that nature. I was eating a lot of that stuff to, com to, to fill the gap. And what became easy to, and that's the biggest reason for the diet, and for me, was the ease of the diet. After about nine months or less, it was just so easy. Fat, protein, that's it. You can make that very quick. Nuts, everything that was able to take on the go, plan week ahead of time and really put that and not have to cook any carbs, buy any carbs, not not to have to do all that became part of the psychological aspect of the diet. Not only was it working, it made me more efficient time-wise and it just was and I and I really didn't hone in because it was part it became part of who I was to the point where it's like, wow, Jim lost me lost this many many pounds. I really looked completely different in a good way, and I felt great that first year. And I and I probably stayed on it realistically two years too long. So this is what I started incorporating. I started incorporating sweet potatoes. That's one of the because that's one of my favorites. Not only favorite, but I just started incorporating sweet potatoes and squash. I don't have squash up there. But I started incorporating that initially, that first week. And then I added some, I added some uh, berries. I started eating a bunch of berries, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries. And it, 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 I'm telling you, my energy levels and everything was, not everything went back to normal. But I don't want to say it wasn't not normal, but it wasn't, it was enough to put it to where I was like, wow, workouts were, were going in the right direction when it came to lifting. Um, I started that I did I did raw honey and then I included lentils because I wanted to eat more I wanted to eat some pasta But I went to lentil pasta red lentil pasta more than anything and I started incorporating that You know slowly, you know once a week now. It's maybe a couple times a month, but and then watermelon um, Watermelon became a big part of before and after workouts and I the whole watermelon though the rind and all Did you know they sell watermelon you probably do watermelon juice? in a bottle at one of those food stores we go to for $10. Who buys that? I mean, that's so expensive. Make it yourself. But anyway, so that's what I incorporate. There's some other carbohydrates that I eat, okay? I'll eat uh, Ezekiel bread once in a while. I'll go through a loaf. Right now, it takes me about two months to go through a loaf myself because it's very rarely. I like it with, I like eating it with eggs, but I'm not going to break that part, but these are the ones I started introducing myself back into when it came to switching over from keto. Now, I phase in and out of keto now, okay? What I mean by this is I go on seven-day, ten-day challenges, mostly seven days, okay? And because I have a broader knowledge of how, not just how it works, but seen how it works, felt how it works, See it in my clients that are on it that seen because it's lost hundreds of pounds, maybe even thousands if I calculate it. But I got documentation that is completely, you know, and it doesn't take a lot of people to see that and how that diet can be utilized temporarily. So I utilize it as a tool. Like I said, I should have only used it maybe for nine months because I really seen my biggest. The biggest results were within that first four and then five compound. It just started compounding and became part of, like I said, who I was. And that broader knowledge led me to doing the keto reset, okay? 
And I have incorporated that into some of my programs as far as for my clients and making sure that they're able to do that, of course. But I utilize it around vacations, around holidays, because I like eating, a lot of us do, around the holidays, on vacations. So I would do a keto reset before I would go on vacation. And then I would do a keto reset after a holiday with a 24-hour fast prior to that holiday a couple days before. And I noticed that the keto diet was the home run. I would eat an excessive amount of calories. And I'm not going to go into how many. But I didn't notice any difference when it came to fat gain, you know, gaining, gaining weight. And it would keep me in the same realm of where I was at. I really wanted to stay between 165 pounds and 170 pounds. I'm at about 172 now. But if I know if I want to go down to 170, the keto diet, uh, intermittent fasting would be the two things I would combine along with taking more steps. But that's not what we're here for, talking about walking. So that is predominantly it. If you have any questions on any of this, if you have any comments, comment. Let me know. Let me know how full of it I am. <laughs> or not. Seriously, though, guys, I appreciate your your support. And it, hit that subscribe button once again. And check this video out. It's either here, here, there, there. But check it out. Trust me. I'll talk to you soon. Later, guys.